all of our four matches we've seen so far in two straight games and just the women's doubles left this afternoon and it features the Indonesian pairing of Gracia Poli and Emiliana Johari up against the Commonwealth Games gold medalist Duala Gutta and Ashwini Bonapa. Well, no doubt the crowd has returned from all the entertainment on the outside of the arena to watch the entertainment inside the arena because there's going to be loud vocal support, I can assure you, for Gracia Poli and Miliana Johari. Well, there you go. The noise going up some considerable decibels with the emergence of Miliana Johari and Gracia Bolli. Absolutely delighted they were with their first round victory, and rightly so, because they've eaten more gin and pan pan of China. And Duala Gutta, the left hander, leading out the two Indian stars, Ashwini Ponapa. Poli, who was talking to me at the hotel yesterday after her victory over Margin and Pan Pan. And they really were thrilled with that, and rightly so, because of course Margin is the reigning world champion in the mixed doubles and silver medalist in the women's doubles, and she's since been dissolved from her world championship silver medal winning partnership with Wang Xiao Li and now playing with Pan Pan. Well, that really was a fantastic victory for the Indonesians. But Duala Gutta, 27 years of age, lives in Hyderabad. Then for the 2009 World Championships. Her partner, Ashwini Ponapa, 21 years of age from Bangalore. And last year caused an absolute sensation at the Commonwealth Games in Delhi, where they took the gold medal. There's Miliana Juhari, 27. Gracia Poli is just 23. They brought up in Manado, north of North Sulawesi. And last year, the Indonesian pair were quarter-finalists here at this particular event, so they'll be looking to at least emulate that by getting through this match. But the Indian pairing, well, unusual pairing in many ways as we look at our court officials for this women's doubles. And unusual mainly because of the fact that Juala Gutta, the left-hander, is one of the very, very few players in World Badminton that still uses the forehand low serve. Well, it serves forehand with every serve. 25 in the world rankings. Down four places since last week. And they're their comfortable victory in the first round against Lottie Jonathans and Pauline van Gorleman of the Netherlands, 17 and 17. And the Indonesians, they too down one place. 14 and 8, their win-loss record for the year, which equates to three semi-finals, the Swiss Grand Prix, 
India Super Series and a week later the Malaysia Grand Prix Gold event. Well, it was a thrilling match, wasn't it, Ian, yesterday when they beat Margin and Pan Pan. We were both watching that. They were 17-20 down in that second game before taking it 23-21. And the whole of Vistora Stadium absolutely erupted with their victory. Yeah, I think they were really inspired by the crowd. That really kept them going to the point where they were beginning to struggle a little bit. And a uh, good example of something we were talking about earlier about home advantage here. Well, there you can see they've won, met each other once previously. And that was in the last 16 of the Asia Badminton Championships last year. Three tough games. So presumably the home advantage is going to carry forward to all the Indonesians in all matches, but especially probably here in this women's doubles because the stadium went sort of strangely quiet for the women's singles that we just saw. There was no Indonesian players on any of the court, and now we've got Indonesians on court number two as well as our court, court number one. Yeah, and I think uh, in Grecia Poli, you've got one of the most popular Indonesian players. She's a real character on the tour. Uh, she's very famous in Indonesia and a very, very popular player. So I think she'll get very good support here. Yeah, very popular, not just in Indonesia. Popular with her peers as well. All the badminton players like Grecia Poli. On my right, Mariana Dauri, Grecia Poli, Indonesia. So the unseeded Dwala Guta and Ashwini Bonapa up against the Indonesians, the number six seeds, uh, Gracia Poli and Miliana Chuhari. interesting to me, Ian, that both these partnerships were formed at roughly the same time, both formed last year. Joana Gutta, of course, used to play with Shruti Kororan. And Johari there used to play with Shendi Puspa Irawati. Good return of serve finds the back line. Oh, that's a beautiful drop shot from Juala Gutta. Three, of course, Juala Gutta also very famous in her mixed doubles partnership with Diju Valiavitil, but he's just undergone back surgery. Minor back surgery, it has to be said. He's done that with the hope of being fully fit, of qualifying for and then participating in the Olympic Games next year in London. Yeah, already in this game we're getting a good flavour of the Indian style of play. Score a lot of points on Ruala's service. Very good on service and then anticipating the next shot. She's always looking to move forward as we see in this rally. Pairs. Opponents tend to get drawn into playing up that left-hand side where she's very dangerous. Oh. Yes, they very much have their favoured formation, don't they? They try and get Gutter forward to the net as much as possible and 
Bonaparte, good athlete, agile, fast, prefers to be at the back of the court. Panap was very much the legs of this combination. Yeah, so presumably the Indonesian pair, their tactics have got to be try and move Dwala Gutta as much as possible. Get her to the back of the court, but that's easier said than done. Yeah, again there, they started off with her in the rear court, she works her way in and hits the winner from the front court. That's the frustrating thing about playing this Indian pair. You come out with clear tactics and actually it's not as easy to do as it as you, as you think it's going to be. Peter Juarez, very, very clever player. Reads the game very well, reads the situations, and as I say, very dangerous on service. Scores a lot of points on service. Lift is just long, good judgment from Johari. Indonesians back into the lead. Started this game so well, rushing to three love. from Gracia Poli. It's a run of five straight points from five, seven adrift. Yeah, I think the Indonesian coach really urging his players to keep some tempo in the game. Not to give all the time to settle, get into that favoured net position, keep pace on the shuttle. Well, that's a run of six straight points into the mid-game interval with a four-point advantage. Just five minutes of play. two pairs playing here that both pairs are quite aggressive in their shot selection their decision making they're not you know Korean Chinese type pairs who are very patient and don't take many risks both these pairs like to take risks and like to try and take the initiative so I think it's quite logical that we're seeing some shorter rallies that maybe you wouldn't normally see at a high level ladies doubles yes and I have to say that I personally like to see the high risk strategy I like to see players really going for it and, you know, Dwala Gutter is a prime example. I mean, she's either playing a brilliant winner or maybe making an error, but it's delightful to see her really going for it, as indeed, as you say, both pairs using that strategy. It's something that the Indonesians did very well against the Chinese yesterday in their first round match. They kept being positive. OK, there was a lot of shuttles coming back, but they kept the pressure on, they kept the tempo high and just mixed up the attack very well with changes of direction and changes of pace. Really kept the Chinese defence off balance. Oh, my word, how did she play that? That was a backhand there from Gracia Polly. And then the easier one, the Indonesians make the error.
There's that left hand again. Indonesians drawn into driving up the left hand side of the court, and that's where Guta Juala really enjoys it. Very, very good on interception on that side of the court. Well, it's a very good flick serve to draw back level. As we said earlier, very dangerous on service. Lots of variety, lots of change of direction. But most players nowadays, in fact, as I was saying right at the start of this match, she's the only player I can think of who really serves forehand the whole serve the whole time. And, and the backhand side, there's, it's a shorter action, isn't it? And, and therefore there's lost, less opportunity for it to all go hideously wrong. But when you see Duala Gutta serving and serving as well as that, you wonder why on earth there aren't more players doing perhaps the same thing. Yeah, she gives you maybe one or two more options with angles and changes of direction. But on the whole, under pressure, the, the, the backhand serve is a much more consistent service. But as we said, Gutter uses it as an attacking as an attacking option almost the whole time. And she gets that little different angle as well, being left-handed, and uses it to really good effect. Well, I know she made the error, but she goes for something, doesn't she, rather than just trying yeah. to play the safety. Yeah, could have cleared it and tried to get back into a defensive position, but no. Wanted to go for the cross drop. Well, the line judge initially. Looking as if he was going to indicate that it was in. Changed his mindset out. I think it was the right decision in the end. Just enough pace on it to get the shuttle past Gracia Polly at the net. And that's clever play. Down the line. Oh dear, that was not the best of serves from Polly. Fabulous play from Juala Gutta. Yeah, and again, it's the serve, the variety on serve that set it all up. That aggressive hold flick serve down the middle and staying in the aggressive attacking position at the net afterwards. Pair really not settled into this game because there's no rhythm. I don't think you can get a bigger contrast than playing the Chinese pair yesterday, you know, very organized and very consistent, very solid in defense, but no real big surprises to playing an Indian pair and it's different angles, different shots, yeah. different tactics, and they've really not found a rhythm in this game so far, the Indonesian pair. Yeah, do you think possibly as well the fact that the Indonesians yesterday it was such a huge win for them they, they were so emotional after 
beating margin and pan pan and do you think maybe that once they saw the draw they built themselves up for that first round encounter and now having won that which they weren't expected to do it's almost as if you know that was the big match that they were building up to and forgotten that they've got the rest of the tournament to play yeah but that's that's where your coach needs to come into effect really he needs to get this players focus needs to get them to focus on the next challenge yeah. well done well played right tomorrow it's different game yeah it's a different game it's a different situation you know tomorrow you'll be favorites that's different already so you know you're playing a left-hander with a different serve with some different tactics and you need to get your players focus Clever. Yeah, so too was that shot from Johari because she saw that Juala Gutta was coming forward to the net and therefore just guided across court. Um, this is the one. Juala was coming forward, but she couldn't have reached that, and therefore having to call to her partner. Well, the umpire here, Grace Chia from Singapore, trying to get the players back onto court. Yeah, in the museum coach there, clearly saying you've got to get in and compete for that net position. Not let Gutter get forward so easily. Not give her so much time in the front court. Stunned silence. <laughs> it's the obvious tactic to flick her, to take her away from the net, but she's actually got good variety overhead. Yeah. She's got very good control, and that was a super shot. Off, a little bit off balance, but managed to find a very, very tight drop shot. She's also got very good power, hasn't she? Yes. Yeah. Now that one's just long at the back line. Oh, that was a great get from Gracia Poli. Nineteen or doing this, mate. Gain points to the Indonesians. gone wide that's well saved by the Indian combination once again Juala Gutta especially having the courage to go for the interceptions go for her shots yeah she was always on the front foot again stepping forward trying to close down the court and 20 all extra points until there's only two points between the two pairs Oh, what an opportunity. Well, missed the favourite there. And she's really frustrated with that one. Yeah, understandably so, because... That's her area normally. Yeah. So a second game point opportunity for the Indonesians. Good communication between the two Indian players. That's good to see. Went for the drop shot, went for the disguise, and it was possibly the right shot to play. 
but wrong execution makes the error and therefore the opening game to the Indonesians seemed to fall away from the shot yeah, they were on the back foot it was indeed the right shot to have attempted the drop shot but it means that Gracia Poli and Miliana Johari take the opening game 22-20 in 17 minutes well the Indonesian coach was so animated when he talks to his players isn't he Uh, that left hand's out. Mm. I think there's no doubt what he's talking about there. That should be a no-go area for them, flat through that forehand side of Gutter, really. What a contrast between the two co coaches. Indonesian, really animated, really expressive in the way he's talking and gesturing. And yet, the Indian coach, Pulela Gopichand, quick quiet word, a couple of pointers, tactics to focus on, and then leaves his players to their own devices. So having taken that tight opening game, 22-20, Gracia Poli and Miliana Johari. We want to capitalise on that. Yes, mid-court area is certainly an area that's worth exploiting in doubles. So good, isn't it? She smashes when she is smashing from the back of the court. She smashes in such a place where she knows the reply will come back straight and she can follow forward to the net position, which is the area of the court that she just loves playing from. luck of the net court yeah just outmaneuvered clever play on the Indian combination. Yeah, Polly forced into three of the four corners during that rally. Eventually, just too late, out of position. 
the damage was done earlier on with good precision for the rear court. Great awareness. Yeah, just emphasizes the point we've been making, Ian, that, you know, they do the unusual. Yeah, they've got some very, very tricky set plays on the first four shots. Great anticipation. It's a good one. It's a pity such a good rally had to end on an error. Well, once again, the luck of the net cord. Went her own luck, really, so. Yeah, it was a good return. She got the shuttle low into the mid court. Shuttle had to come up, able to take a good position at the front of the court and got the net cord. The Indonesian pair really struggling here tactically, I feel. They really haven't worked their opponents out at all. They won the first game, but start of this game. Really what should they be doing then? It's a question. They can use the middle of the court a little bit more, I think, particularly from the rear court. Use the middle of the court, give your partner time to get into good position. What they're seeming to be doing is they're attacking the sides of the court very quickly. The partner isn't getting into position, and that leaves space for counter-attack. Their middle, now they've got time. They get the lift out the back of the court. Yeah. It's a good percentage game, a little bit more patience. Good judgment. That was just wide. And considering the shuttle is holding up on that side, but didn't drift back in. Kept wide. Well, that time the switch in attacking play worked because initially they played it safe. Yep, they played good percentage early on in the rally. Then they get into a good solid formation, then they can use the switch attack rather than panicking and going for too much early on in the rally before you get your partner into a good position. Just need to just calm down a little bit just with the crowd and the atmosphere. I think they're just trying to do a little bit too much all the time. A short, uh, complete miss hit from Juala Gutta. Yeah, and Gracia Polly had to be very careful with that, that she didn't take the shuffle before it crossed over the net. 
Yeah. Well, that's a super return again. Well, it's just wide. Yeah, that time the shuttle carried by the drift. Yeah. That's a good low serve. Well, uh, Park not allowing Joel Agutter to towel down. And given the noise in the arena, Indonesian women's doubles pair have just won on the adjoining court beating the former world number ones Chen Wen Singh and Chien Yu Chin of Taipei yeah, again all through that rally the Indonesians had four or five opportunities in attack and each time, they act, when, they, they, when they're hitting hard, they're hitting onto the defence. And that allows the Indian players to move the shuttle around in counter-attack. Rather than looking for angle down into the space in the middle of the court to set the rally up first, they're hitting hard, hard onto the players straight away. And that's just not, uh, not working for them here. Uh, trying to serve out wide and a poly alert to that oh, that's a lovely shot yeah and there we get the nice contrast there when Panapa's forced to the rear court she hits him to the centre of the court so the shuttle has to come back past the partner so she gets a partner into the game straight away early in the rally. And that's just maybe what's missing with the Indonesians at, time in, at times in this match. Well, the Indonesians taking on board some liquid. Mm. As indeed they should. hot, humid conditions, and just to emphasize what's happened on the adjoining court with the women's doubles, Vita Marissa and Nadia Malati have put out the number two seeds, Chen Wen Singh and Chen Yu Chin in two straight games, 21-19, 23-21, so yet more upsets here at the Indonesian Open. Oh, this is the hall every year, isn't it? If there's going to be a big upset during the year, it's going to come in this hall. Great atmosphere. You have to say it's Indonesia's day so far as well. Very much so. Better pressure from Polly there. Polly trying to move forward all the time during that rally, trying to get in and compete for that front court area and eventually make, forcing the mistake. So the Indonesians back level.
Well, Gracie Apolli. Fell back, lost a balance, and sitting on the court at one stage in that rally, but managed to recover. And the Indian pair will see that as a missed opportunity, unable to capitalise on that. Yeah, very much so. make it look so simple don't they yep it's just good organization hitting into an area from the rear court here putting the shuttle in front of a partner's left hand partner stepping out for interception really good doubles good combination Good serve. Yeah, and keeping it flat. Ponapa. Flat over the net. And again, quick points on the gutter service. from Panata hitting the centre of the court, prepared to hit five or six shots. Yep. It's a mistake in the end. I was quite surprised the penultimate shot from her. She hit and started to move forward, and I was surprised by that. Yeah, yeah. She played it well. She played the rally with good patience, kept her partner in a good position. Yeah, she should have. And in the end, just forced the play a little bit. Mm. Clever smash. Sitting across the defence, Holly there just guilty of lining up a little bit and forehand defence position, getting caught with the switch to a backhand defence. Oh, that's brilliant! Goodness me. And again, we see, though, hitting straight onto the defence. Yeah. Hitting hard, off balance, hitting hard at the player, leaving the whole court open. Well, this is the sort of situation that bewilders me sometimes. How come she wasn't ready there? She was ready. Uh, she was looking up, she was looking at the server. Yeah, and I'm sorry to say, players are doing that more and more, especially when there's a good flick serve comes in and they've been caught off guards, they, they say they're not ready. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it, it, you're right, it's prevalent in the game at the moment. Now you can see the frustration from Gracie Apolli serving into the net. Here's the danger for the Indonesian pair. Gutter on service. What's she going to do? Well, Joala Gutter has asked the court to be mopped. And the umpire has said there isn't perspiration. I'd be awfully surprised if there wasn't. What's she going to do on service? It's sure she'll be looking for a set play here of some sort. Yeah, it was the clever change of pace from the left-hander once again at the net. And force the error from opponents. Well, couldn't get the third one back. 
Um, set up again from a very clever service. Well, this is why they're such a good pair to watch. Both of them, both pairs. Full commitments. Try the unusual. Looking to find the gaps. Because the third shot from Ponapa there just guided into the open space. So a four point cushion here in this second game. And just three points away from a third and decider. It was a correct call by the line judge. Joala Gutter doesn't like the call. I thought it was correct, Ian. Yes, I did. Holly being very positive, moving in, trying to get into that net position. And from here, it certainly looked well in. That was put away with Venom. A super return. Good flick serve. Fault called because she yeah. touched the shuttle before it landed out the back of the court. One more point, says Dwala Gutta. You only need one of the next four. And they're taking the second game. It's going wide. Yeah, one game point has been saved. Desperately trying to get it past Gracia Poli at the front of the court, but so agile. Got back to it. Well, Poli's looked a little bit nervous on service in this game. Needs to hold the nerve now. but well, throws in the flick and that was probably nerves didn't have the courage to serve low and the flick is long of the double service line it is one game apiece yeah definitely long of that double service line got back well she's a very good athlete is Ashwini Bonapap. So it's one game apiece. 
Indian Commonwealth Games gold medalist, taking the second 21-18. 42 minutes in duration this match so far. As you say, Gopichan there, very calm, very collected. Not giving his players too much information, getting them to concentrate on one or two things. I have to say, on the Indonesian side, it's all been a little bit frantic. And the organisation's not been not been great. I still feel they're the slightly better pair, but tactically they're being outmanoeuvred at the moment. And they just need some calm heads here, slow things down a bit, be a little bit more patient, be a little bit more constructive. Well, I suspect that Gopichan was saying he was looking as if he was saying to Juala Gutta, when you intercept on that backhand side, just stop it short. Just vary the pace a little. I have Fourth to say, one. she's been doing that very seconds. well throughout Fourth the match. One. 20 seconds. Well, we thought this would be a close encounter. And indeed, Final it's game. proving to be. The ball, play. Third and deciding game. Yeah, there's the left-hander intercepting. Yeah, that's not a great decision from Jihara there. Pushing up that forehand wing of Gutter is really not the place to play. That's good defence. Yeah, and there's that change of pace again. Very good angle into the centre of court from Panapa. From the rear court. First interception hard from Gutter. Forcing her opponents off the net. And then the change of pace with the block. Very good doubles. Good teamwork. Better from Polly. Took the pace off to the middle of the court. Mm -hmm. And then put the pace back on, the change of pace, force the mistake. Better variety. A yeah, call from Joala Gutta to her partner to leave it. Four, one. And again, you'd have to say, looking at the Indonesian play there, they've got. Gutter in the backcourt, they know that Panapa wants to come away to leave space for Gutter. Lots of space for the block there when it's Panapa in the front court. And yet they drove out of the back of the court from the fast end. Yeah, the channel attack down the centre. Yeah. Both the Indonesian players leaving it for the other. Yeah, and the Indian pair have used that centre attack a lot more effectively, I'd have to say, so far in this match. Well, it's extraordinary to me, Ian, because... The Indonesians look totally different players to what you and I witnessed yesterday in their first round encounter against the Chinese combination. 
just don't seem to have the same sort of sparkle or uh, they fed on the rhythm and the pace of the game yesterday managed to pull themselves up to the level of the Chinese and with the crowd behind them found one or two inspirational plays but here there's no rhythm it's a very tactical battle it's not a physical there's no physicality to this game really it's very tactical and they've got themselves in a little bit of a mess here Just wide. And a rally like that demonstrates another point that coming on to at the start of this match, you wouldn't have expected it to be the Indian pair that were the more patient pair. But certainly when the shuttle's in the rear court, they're prepared to hit to the centre, wait and wait for the opportunities to attack. Whereas the Indian pair is quite frantic when they get the attack. They're trying to attack very, very quickly, trying to win the point very quickly rather than being patient and playing the rallies out and manoeuvring the Indian players around the court. And do you think also, I mean, we've, we've seen numerous dives from both the Indonesian players, and to me that's almost a sign of desperation, that they're sort of just desperately trying to get the shuttle back rather than thinking about how they should approach the rally and, and command the rally from, from the onset. Yeah, they're, they're just, not, they're, they're not settled in the game. They haven't got a clear game plan. They, they're chopping and changing between tactics. That's and their decision-making has not been good. And here they are again, desperation defence. Well, happy to get away with it. Yeah. Well, the crowd desperately trying to lift their players. Broken racket there, clash of rackets down the middle. A bit of a misunderstanding, they got away with it. But the racket didn't. And he just wants to test the new racket. Yeah, they, they involve the net players so well, don't they? And it's all, presumably, from the channel attack. Yeah, yeah. And the Indonesians defensively are not setting up very well against that, considering it's been the similar sort of attack for nearly three games now. Lady, long reach. There's Guala Gutta, 1 metre 80. Yeah, but again, it's the Indonesians forced to run and scramble and scrape because they're not in charge tactically at all. They can't get the tactical initiative off the serve and return situations at all. Coach now indicating to them he wants them to play defence to the back two corners and work the rear court. It's very difficult to do from this end, the quicker end. Yeah, and very difficult to do because... Nine. The Indian players are not standard sort of women's doubles players in that Dwala Gutta there hit a smash cross court and immediately followed into the net. So you're not going to be able to move her from side to side at the back because she will make her way forward. No, she won't accept to do it. She doesn't accept that tactic. Panapa's ready for it, they've got a good understanding and they rotate out.
needed that point. See if they can settle down and get some points going on service now. Again, it's Polly going forward. Polly's the one who's tried to take the initiative. She's tried to compete for that front court. But again, they'd, they'd lost the initiative in the rally. Half one. I think Panapa was actually distracted by her opponent being on the floor here. She took her eye off the shuttle, lost her timing a little bit there. Tidy, but there's some intent with Polly's game at the moment. She's trying to get forward and keep keep Gutter off the net position. She struggled in this match on service, and they needed to serve well here to close this gap down before the break. That's a good return. Again, and then switches it. And the switch down Polly's forehand side means that she's defending straight and it comes straight up to the left hander's forehand. There's the set play. What was it, two or three down the centre? Then the switch. Gets a partner into the game. So a five point advantage as the players change ends in this deciding game. Five minutes shy of the hour mark. Got one, 20 seconds. Got one, 20 seconds. of publicity recently about Pilala Gopichand and Simon Abel, the number one women singles player, splitting up as personal coach. Of course, Pilala Gopichand is the head coach of the Indian team, and he said that he really needed to spend time with all the players. But all the problems have been resolved, I'm happy to say. Much an under misunderstanding as anything else, and has so often blown out of all proportion in the written media. Particular in the Indian media. Sign is such a big star over there oh. now. They're looking for stories every day on her, aren't they? Yeah. Mega star. It's big news over there at the moment. Well, so to a large extent is this women's doubles pair, Juala Gutta and Ashwini Bonapa. She'll be disappointed there. A little set play, flick up the middle and stayed at the fore court. Shuttle came back to it. Just forced it out the rear court. to afford those mistakes Seven. now if they're going to get back into this game. Change of shuttle. I have to say, and I think this is possibly the best I've seen the Indian pair play since they won that gold medal in Delhi at the Commonwealth Games. Again, you have to look at the conditions a bit, I think, Jill, in that it's quite a quick haul. 
so it's difficult to play the two rear, co rear corners against them and work them in the rear court to break all their combination plays. In a quick haul like this, it suits these Indian pairs with their attacking plays. Most definitely. on that serve and once again yep. flicking out that's what happened on game point in the second game that's been a problem that's good Short. Yeah, and it's very risky hitting smash cross court when you're out of position. Opened up their own court to the counter attack, and Guts are happy to take advantage. Yeah, it was the cross court smash from Garcia Poli. Played herself into trouble. Six point advantage now. Again, that was a good opportunity. Jahar has really struggled, hasn't she, with the shot selection from the midcourt? Yeah. Okay, and it's poor choice straight up to Gutter's forehand. She got away with it, but not very clear thinking. And just senses that for the home players, it's absolutely essential they close down this gap before too long. <laughs> One of the rare occasions that Ponapat. He's made a poor choice of shots. And they're going cross court. Yeah, a partner backing off the net to cover the space. Wasn't ready for that cross attack from a partner. Uh, went for the kill at the net to Gracia Poli, but missed it. And I wonder how costly that might be. Clock ticks over the hour mark in this women's doubles encounter. We still see absolute commitment. Yeah, they've done the hard work, the Indonesians there. They've survived in the attack. Got the opportunity to come forward, but just forced the opportunity in the front court there and made the mistake. Pushed it wide. There's a lot of errors from both teams at the moment. Both of them know this is a real opportunity. Who's going to stand up and take the pressure here? Yes, because of course in their section of the draw, Maeda and Suetsuna, the seeded pair, went out in the first round. Another mistake on service from Polish. She's really under pressure on the service line at the moment. A good serve. That looks a slightly tired looking shot to me. Yeah, it's a lot of mistakes crept into the game both ends. If one player can just step up and take control here, it's wide open. Turn. Yes, it was a big point. There have been two easy errors from a partner there, and Gutter stood up, took responsibility, and went for the winner on return. 
It's a super shot. Napa's having a real crisis of nerves here, isn't she? Yes, very you nice. Can see the winning line, and she's struggling. Yeah, it's that very loose serve. Now, has Gracia Polly got her nerves on serve? Yeah, that was a good serve. have used the centre attack and it's very effective for them. Centre attack to Panapa, a good choice there from Garcia Poli. Can she serve to Gutter? She's had real problems all through this game and this is a really big point now. Yeah, just one point for deficit now. Uh, that's a good smash, really made the effort to move her feet, get in position, take it on the forehand. It would have been awfully easy just to play that with the backhand. Yes, and here's the danger. There's danger now for Indonesia. It's Gutter who's got the service, and I'm sure she'll be looking for something, some little play, some change of angle. She'll be aggressive on this service. Deciding game. Yeah, got caught deep on the back end. Good from a pat. Yeah, that was the one. And I don't think Joala Gutter actually realised her partner had played it. Given up on the rally. There's another error in the return of serve from Bonapa. And it's all level in the deciding game. 65 minutes of play. And these two pairs cannot be separated. One game all, 18 all. She's oh. missed it. Would you believe it? Wide open. That puts the crowd right back in the game as well. Good scrambling again from Polly. Just digging it up. Two points away from victory. That's going wide as well now, just the one on a run of four straight points. Remember they were six points adrift at one stage at 8.14 down. Now it's match points. And they've done it! What a remarkable comeback! 21-18 in the deciding game. They weathered the storm. The number six seeds, Gracia Poli and Miliana Johari. And once again, the emotion. So popular here in Indonesia and all around the world, Gracia Poli. She's a player that gives such commitment on courts, always friendly and chatty. And that is remarkable. A run of five straight points to close out the match from 16 18 down. 
and they can celebrate a memorable victory that seemed unlikely at one stage. Their confirmation of the score, 22-20, 18-21, 21-18 in the deciding game in an hour and eight minutes. Oh, goodness me. What a thrilling match it was. And Gracie Apollo is going to throw a T-shirt to the crowd. Well, celebrations all around for the Indonesians. Well, you and I were talking, Ian, about the fact it's been a memorable day for the Indonesians. Indonesia very much in the ascendancy here at the Jaram 2011 Indonesian Open. Yeah, the crowd in fine voice once again, as indeed they were when Talpit Hiriak won his men's singles against Bao Chun Lai of China. Well, four of our five featured matches involving Indonesians this afternoon and all four Indonesian teams or players have recorded victories. Now Indonesia traditionally so strong in badminton and they've been highly criticised in the media here for a lack of results in recent times but my goodness what an Indonesian Open they're having at the moment of victory for the women's doubles well they followed up their great win yesterday against Margin and Pan Pan with a great comeback here against the Commonwealth Games gold medalists Duala Gutta and Ashwin Bonapa 21-18 in the deciding game, having been 8-14 adrift. So they're safely through to the quarter-final, and they will play the winners of Christina Peterson and Camilla Rutiul, the Danes, who are playing against Jung Kyun-ung and Kim Ha-na.